He's joining me right now. This man's about to go on tour. He's about to drop an album again. He's got singles out right now that are burning all the streaming <laughs> charts up. He's one of my favorites of all time, man. Swayze joins us right now. Swayze, how you doing, brother? Oh, amazing. That was a great intro, bro. Thank you very much. Look, man, I'm feeding off your energy. You know, you have good energy, good vibes always. That's kind of a, a hallmark of your sound and, and what your brand has represented, right? I mean, you call it, you've kind of been an eternal optimist, right? Wouldn't you say? <laughs> hey, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I try to uh, keep a positive outlook. And, you know, I mean, there's so much stuff going on out there and there's so many ways to consume music. So I figure when you come to hear a Swayze song, I want you to feel good. You know, that's why I want you to leave feeling good. Well, man, that's what always happens. And now you got the new album coming out, Shwaycation. Uh, this is coming out next week. Talk to me a little bit about it, because it's been about a two-year gap between this project and the last one. Yeah. Uh, what What made you say this was the right time for Shwaycation? You know, for me, it's always uh, a challenge figuring out how soon to put out music, you know, because a part of me wants you to digest the, the last album, but... At the same time, I think this day and age, I think it's important to keep it going. So I, I, I just finished a long tour and I was meeting all my fans across the country and it was just time. I was like, you know, I got to give you guys something else. So um, and, and and so Shwaycation was birthed, man. And I'm, I'm really proud of this album. I was like, it, it continues that feel good vibe that people have known me for um, with a little evolution. It has a little bit of Cali reggae vibes, but I'm mixing it up. I got some hip hop. I got some rock. You know, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to blend it all together. Well, it's kind of always been your thing, right? I mean, even from the first record all the way to this one, is you've yeah. always kind of genre blended, which is weird because I feel like I've heard you before when people interview you, they always try to figure out how to characterize you, right? Like, is he's a rapper or he does some rock or it's a reggae <laughs> album? But absolutely, you've never fit into any of that, like from buzzing to shwaycation. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, you know, you hit it right on the nose. I always find it very interesting when people ask me, like, what genre are you? And I know it's like, you know, I should fit into one, but, you know, I grew up by the beach and I, I grew up, you know, listening to bands like Red Hot Chili Peppers, but then I've also grew up listening to like Outkast and, you know, having just like that span of music, it just inspired me to make all types of things, you know? So I think when I first started, you know, just writing to acoustic guitars was like my huge inspiration like on the beach writing to a car guitars hanging out with my friends that's how i started writing music and as i've evolved i've tried to evolve in, as an artist and try to touch different vibes you know but i think the underlying just feel good is kind of i think that i wish that was a genre i just feel good it, it could be <laughs> reggae it could be rock it could be um anything country but as long as it feels good in the soul that's kind of what i'm trying to create but don't you feel like we're moving to somewhat of a genreless day in music of even if you think about guys like Jelly Roll or Post totally. Malone just put out a country record and he has, right. you know, I mean, the, everyone kind of just bends to what they're feeling the vibe at the time. It's not so much like, oh, we need another rap record from Jelly Roll. It's like, <laughs> that's not what he's feeling at the time. So like, right. why does he need to do another rap record? Let him do, you know, his country vibe. I really think it's beautiful that listeners are letting artists do their thing like that, you know, because I even remember after I made my first album, uh, it was almost like, we all, we only want to hear this over and over again. And it took a while of me putting out music consistently for my fans to finally be like, you know what? I messed with Swayze. Like, even if I still look like the old stuff, you know, I, I respect him as an artist and I appreciate the journey. And I think that's what it is. Like, you know, just artists are all constantly going on journeys and trying to evolve, you know, so... Um, as long as the listeners are open and, and down for us to do these little tangents. And, you know, sometimes some of the tangents are weird, but it's a, it's a moment in time, you know? Well, you got to go with what you're feeling, right? You can't exactly. force creativity. You got to just feel whatever the energy is, wherever it's leading you, right? I mean, it could lead you to country, like you said, which would be interesting. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd be down to hear that. I would love, I, I actually recorded a vacation in Nashville. So um, I was immersed in the country scene. I loved it. Um, yeah, I actually have on my last album a kind of country-leaning song with my friend Claire Wright uh, called um, Slice of Sunshine. So look, you might have a Swayze album, country album coming out. You never know. Like when, when your name comes up and, and you talk about the vibe and, and the songs that people would like to hear you do or the people they'd like to hear you work with, Wiz right. has been a consistent, like, 
when are we getting the Wiz and Shwayze record? You know? Right, right, um, right. And now you have it, Smoke Too Soon. Here's my question about it. Two things. One, getting Wiz on this one. Like, why was this the one that you thought, okay, this we can bring this together? And two, Wiz goes first, you go second. But did you record first or did you record after you heard what he heard, what he laid down? That's a really good question. That's a very, very good question. First of all, you're absolutely right. You know, fans have been asking about the Wiz Swayze collab forever, and it, it just felt really good. You know, I don't know. Being an independent artist, you know, you're always looking for cool wins like that. You know what I mean? And and, and getting a good and like, I haven't really reached out to a lot of my friends for features. You know, I was thinking about it, and I was like. Wiz would be great for this album. You know, it would just like give me that umph that I needed. It also would make my fans really happy. So I just reached out and um, she showed my love. Wiz was very responsive. And to answer your question, I recorded mine first. Okay. Um, I had I, I I I had like a I had two verses actually. Like I had a whole thing, and then I just erased my first verse. And I was like, you know what? Let's let Wiz rock. And I think it's really cool because since I'm singing the hook, having Wiz start. You know, it just made sense, just like for his fans. Like it feels like a Wiz song, and then I'm on the hug, and then I come through later. So I don't know. I was just trying to make it, make it fun. No, it was cool, man. And you know, those are always the questions, like as a hip hop head, that I'm interested in knowing. Like I remember <laughs> I had Shaq on one time, and I'm like, "Hey, were you and and Biggie, who laid the verse first? Like I had to know." And Shaq was like, "I did, man. I wasn't scared of him." And I'm like, "Yeah, right." Like, love to Shaq, always, right? But, you know... <laughs> wait I mean, a minute. I, wait, wait. Why am I just finding out that Shaq and Biggie had a song? You don't know that? Can't Stop the Rain is the name of the record. Shaquille um, O'Neal and, and Biggie Smalls had a song? Yes. What? Uh, and Big goes off on... Shaq does his thing. You know what I mean? Shaq does his thing. But it's like Biggie Smalls, like, prime. Wow. This is like 96, maybe? Um <laughs> You got to check it out, man. You got to. I will. Can't, can't stop, stop the rain. rain. I'm gonna try that as soon as like as soon as we get off. I'm bumping that. That's crazy. Okay, sweet man. Um, you know what? Do you ever think like when you came out in 08, like you had kind of this? At least from my perspective, it might have been different from yours. But when you came out in 08, you almost had this super push. It felt like commercially, right? With Buzzin right. and Corona and Lime, huge records. Yeah. You had the TV show on MTV. Yeah. Um, which was a reality show. And I felt like you were in that, almost like the last of the Mohicans, like the last artist to launch really before streaming took over the world, where you oh. could still make money on record sales. There were still physical albums in the store. I think I even remember one of the the buzzing episodes, you were looking at your physical record yeah, in your hand. Physical CDs, right. Yeah, like, whoa, this is crazy. Um, and now it's come all the way to stream. But do, but do you think like you were kind of that last generation before everything changed? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny looking back on that because there were so many things like, do you remember MTV TRL and stuff like Oops, that? Yeah, like, Total Request Live. Like, we, I think we were the last episode of TRL. Like, we, we literally last of like a whole situation there. And it is interesting looking back on it and how the how the industry's changed to fully streaming and TikToks is how you blow up now. But, you know, I think it's kind of a beautiful thing and it's kind of in the way in a way, because back then, like, you had to get a record deal. You know, you had to get a record yeah. deal to get yourself popping off. I mean, it was starting to move out, but now it's like, you can pop off by yourself with reels and just consistency. So, um, there is a change, and I know a lot of people are, like, you know, uh, feeling weird about the change. You know, people are my generation, but I'm just trying to be um, as malleable as possible and just go with the flow, and I'm trying to, like, get better at posting on social media constantly, and, you know, I'm just trying to stay, stay up with the times. But the good thing about it is, and the, the, I feel really grateful, is that the music feels timeless, you know? Because even those songs that, when I, when I go do a show right now and I play those old songs, it's like, they just came out and it just blows my mind. But it's also nice to know kind of what, what, what it was before and learning that side of the industry. I feel like that kind of gives you the, the tools to go into this new generation. Because like, no, man, I went through the hard knocks. I went through the... Totally the tours and the media runs and doing all this kind of stuff early on. Exactly. Um, and it's persistent, man. Why do you think you've persisted when so many from that same era, you don't hear from anymore, you know, respectfully, but you don't hear from right. a lot of guys that came out in 07, 08, 09. Right. When you've persisted. I was just telling my, uh, I was talking to someone about this the other day. It's interesting. Like, you know, when I first started, there's people that have blown up and are doing arenas 
and there's people that like you never hear from at all and i'm like right in that middle space and i honestly love that little middle space that i'm at you know because you know i can like go i just took my kid to the amusement park the other day and i don't really get stopped you know i can live my life and still like perform i need to stop doing things like this because people are gonna start recognizing me but <laughs> like um i just think that i'm in this 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 beautiful space and the reason i persisted is i truly with all my heart love creating i love entertaining and i love making music um i love to act so it, these are just loves of mine you know and honestly i don't think that i could do anything else like uh i remember right before buzzing came out i was uh i was going to real estate school because i was like all right well like i have a good personality if i can figure this out maybe i can flip some houses like i was trying to figure out what my other things would be and um, I just keep on falling into entertainment. So as, as long as people keep listening and people like you keep giving me interviews and caring, I'm gonna keep on going. So let me let me just go back real quick to 09 for just a second, because we talked yeah. about Wiz. Yeah. And a counterpart to Wiz in a lot of ways is Snoop, right? You can make those parallels. And totally. you had Snoop on your album back, the Let It Beat album that came out in yeah. 09. Living It Up was the name of the record. Yeah. Um, getting the snoop vocals like we've seen like the dj khaled me memes of like all <laughs> oh, the vocals are in right like the timberlake vocals are here the jay-z vocal getting the snoop vocals like especially oh. as a west coaster oh. uh, you probably coming up where doggy style and the chronic are still bubbling on you know you hear nothing but a g thing probably every day on the radio of course. Um, to get the snoop vocals on your record like can you walk me through getting that First of all, and, and you and you tapped on something, the chronic too. I remember when I was a kid, the chronic 2001 uh, yeah. had an instrumental um, um, CD. So it was only instrumentals. He released it only as instrumental. And literally that helps my rap so much. Like all I did was write rhymes to that instrumental thing. But on, a, on another note, I mean, Snoop, when I heard Snoop, like it was like a, a run around the room, like, oh, he's like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Of course it was like, I think that was, that was the, at the time, the first big feature I'd ever received, you know, and to hear him on a song with me was absolutely surreal. Mind blowing. I, I still trip about it. Like my son's 13 now, and he's at the age where he's cool. He kind of thinks his dad's cool, but kind of like, you know, yeah. not really. And I'm like, wait, I have a song with Snoop. I'm like trying to show him I'm cool. I'm like, look at this song with Snoop I have. He's like, okay, that's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm getting cool points from some of my old stuff, which is mind blowing. <laughs> and what's great too about the Snoop record you got is Snoop, he didn't mail it in, man. Like he didn't just kind of come with a just Snoop yeah. verse. Like he rapped on it. He rapped. He rapped on that thing, bro. No, he killed it. He killed that. No, and, and and that was another situation where I already had my my verse written, you know, but I was like, damn, should I rewrite myself? I mean, he was Snoop's the legend, man. Snoop's super He's best. the best, man. It's funny, <laughs> funny story is like uh like a couple years later. I was like driving the airport and I saw like people crowding someone. It was Snoop. So I told my driver, I, I was like, wait, wait, stop up. I hopped out of the car. I'm like, Snoop, what up, it's Swayze. And he was like, he had no idea who I was. <laughs> well, you know, if the, look, when you talk about how you're like in a good level of famous. Exactly. He's in that level to where he meets a thousand people a day. Yeah. And he's done yeah. a thousand records. A thousand yeah. records. Exactly. No, but that was amazing. I was like, Snoop, what? I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I have, I'm, continue on. People are mad at me, like trying to take pictures. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna keep it moving. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Now, um, the tour life, right? You're about to go on tour. Uh, you can get the dates at Swayze.com slash tour. You're kicking yeah. off here. Um, you're not gonna be in the Texas area uh, in the next couple months, but we hope you come to Houston. I've seen you here in Houston a few times. Um, oh, would, would love for you to come by here, but talk to me about the tour grind because I feel like you're almost an athlete in that way, right? Like of having to find not only your rhythm and your process on the road, but recovery, where you're going to eat, you leave the tour. There's only so many things open after the show and like staying fit and healthy and trying to get all that in. Like, yeah. have you mastered this at all over the years? It's a work in progress. I wouldn't say master, you know, but I learn every single time and you're right. Like, I did those tours um, early on and you want to like drink and party every night. And, you know, sometimes a drink before the thing will help you loosen up, but you multiply that by 30 shows in a month period. 
your body's going through a lot, you know? So yeah, I, I, now I try to cook as much as possible on tour. Um, and uh, I, I try not to eat at all in any kind of gas stations and things like that. You know, just try to keep the food. Cause just, just that change, like, like eating well, like makes your body and your mood so much better. And as far as the drinking, I try to like, you know, uh, space it out a little bit, you know, not every night, every other night maybe, or maybe just one shot or something, a little Casamigos or Posado before stage, you know, but I try to keep it mellow. And it's, like I said, it's a work in progress. So when you're recording these records, I, he I heard you talk about the, um, the Lil Wayne documentary that came out years ago. I think it was the Carter documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember the, the opening of that doc, he's recording Swagger Like Us verse and yeah, uh, like yeah, in a crazy. hotel room or something. Yes, yes, yes. And um, you said that helped kind of made you switch your writing style, at least for a little while, where you're yep. doing it more in your head, like the Jay-Z uh, Lil Wayne approach, as opposed to pen and paper or typing it in notes. Right. Did you find that that process made it easier to kind of get exactly what you wanted to say in the verse down without having any, you know, like when you write something down, you might put an extra word or syllable in there. <laughs> right, that, right. that doesn't fit exactly right. But when you're there and effortlessly and it's in your mind already and you've written to this beat over and over in your head, did you find that it flowed better or was it a more bit difficult challenge? No, absolutely. I think that's what, um, like when, when you get off the paper a little bit, at least for me, it does help with the flow. Cause like you can do something that you might not have thought of on the paper. Like you might throw a melody in there like, Ooh, that's kind of cool. That's why you keep the recorder on too. Like the little phone recorder, just in case, you know, but I can't, um, I I'm not um, claiming to be anywhere as dope as Wayne or Jay in that kind of process, but that process just inspired me as a writer, because as a writer, I think you're always kind of looking for things to inspire you. Like, yes, you can walk around in the daytime and find things like that, but there could be techniques that inspire you or like anything could inspire something, you know? So just that concept of keeping in your head was inspiring to me. So yeah, I did like a little EP like that. And then now I do like a hybrid of it. Like I'm, I'm thinking in the head, but then I might write something down. But you know, now um, with the recording, I like to like punch and just- right you know, just sit there and I can just punch myself and think about a line and then punch myself. And I think that's really fun. If I'm recording by myself, that's how I do it. If I have an engineer there, I kind of don't want them to sit through that grueling process of me like trying to figure things out. So I kind of force myself to write and do different things. But um, yeah, everything inspires different kind of stuff, man. I think there's a million different songwriting techniques and I literally use as many as I know all the time because that's what just keeps it going. And say there's no wrong way to do something as long as you do it right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, as long as you find it, what, what you're right. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You're right. Your workflow, whatever works for you. Now, going from writing your own lines and your own songs and your own lyrics and having to memorize lines for a television show or a movie and act in a scene, like, did you find it difficult having words come out of your mouth and emote and trying to emote on them that, aren't yours or aren't for a record? Mm, that's a great question. That's really cool. Um, no, you know, actually, I love that. You know, I love that a bit of escapism and a bit of just like imagination and creativity in that space. And it's kind of like a relief that I didn't write the words. You know, I think I can even go a little deeper and kind of escape a little bit more. Um, and no, man, yeah, the, the the acting journey is funny because I've always wanted to be an actor before music, before anything, like acting was like what I thought. I thought I was going to be like, you know, an actor. And who knows? I'm still I'm still working on it. Hey, I'm still working I mean, you've on been it. in big shows, man. Avid yeah. Elementary, Lincoln, Lord, these are huge shows. Oh, no, man, I'm, I'm, I'm super blessed, man. I'm super stoked. I, I just sent, I auditioned for these shows, you know, just like anyone would. Like, these were not offers or anything. I wasn't getting any special love because I'm Swayze or anything like that. So it was really humbling and also just really inspiring to like book these shows, you know? And I was like, all right, I want to do more because like the cre the creativity on set is just so fun. I mean, there's hundreds of people literally all working together on this task to make this thing. And, you know, um, I just love being about a, a, a part of that creative process. And I, it just kind of brings that same excitement that I had when I first started making music it brings me that, like, you know, when I'm, like, getting a script or 
I did an audition yesterday and I was like stoked for it, you know. So I don't know. Um hopefully we do you see me more on the on the on the on the screen. Because it's stretching a different muscle, right? I mean, that's probably why it's giving you that same excitement. Because like when you're first recording records, you're trying to figure out how to make a record. It's not just as simple as exactly. hitting record. It's song structure and verse and a bridge. And how am I going to come out of that? And man, I went really hard in verse one. What am I going to do for verse two? Because I don't think I can right. top that, you know? And then finding your rhythm in, in acting. That's really cool, man. Okay, last question for you. You've been very appreciative. I'm a very appreciative with your time. Um, oh, man. There's certain people I feel like you mentioned some of your early influences, like Red Hot Chili Peppers. We talked about Snoop and the Chronic 2001 album from Dre and the instrumentals. Sometimes, though, there are rappers that are so good or they have a verse that's so good. It makes you question your decision to be a rapper, I'm sure. Um, who are those guys who make you question yourself sometimes and like, wow, this guy's so elite, You know, whether it be oh, Jay sure. or Wayne or yeah. whoever. Right. I think everyone hears that record and go, how did he think of that double entendre or right. just, don't even ask him how, but bro, like honestly, but all the, both those guys you mentioned, Jay and Wayne, for sure. I most recently felt that way during the um, Kendrick and Drake battle. Mm. Cause I was just imagining myself there. I'm like, what am I doing? Am I really sitting there trying to battle someone and like come up with this shit and like digging deep? Like I, I will just be done. Like one battle towards me. I'm just like, I, I give up. Like <laughs> during that time, I was just like, "Wow! Like these guys are incredible." Or even Eminem on the new wet record. When I'm I'm hearing like how technically how he's rapping and like him and Jid, I think the other rapper is. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like I don't know. It's like math rock, like it, it, to, to us, you know, like how they're able to like just throw. I, my brain can't think like that, you know. So, um, J Cole, all the all the good rappers, I pretty much am like, I don't know how you guys do that because me. I, sure, I rap, but I'm just more of a vibe. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just vibing on the track. I'm I've never considered myself like, you know, uh, a crazy rapper. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can I can spit some bars. Don't get me wrong. Damn, man, smoke but, too soon. You went off. Oh no, no, I appreciate you, man. But no, but um, yeah, all those guys. M, um, Lil Wayne, of course. Um, Real G's moving silence like lasagna. Like, uh, who's I figure that out yeah <laughs> um and and kanye kanye has had so many amazing lines and kanye was a huge inspiration on me and just like how his clever lines and uh yeah so uh yeah, all when he guys. said sophisticated ignorance i write my curses in cursive i was like that's He's so i get good. a custom you're a customer you ain't custom <laughs> to going through customs i said this man's going he's he's so good and, he, and he's never stopped like pushing the boundaries on his creativity with those kind of lines. So I, I always appreciate him as well. Well, hey, man, we're, we're excited for the new album. We're excited for the tour. Congrats on Shwaycation. It's out next Friday. The tour, you start in October, going through uh, end, of, end of the year pretty much, right, on the tour. Yeah, end of the year, we're going to the East Coast and in Canada. Uh, Shwayze.com slash tour. Go get your tickets right now. We'll be everywhere. We're coming to Texas soon. Um, so keep an eye on that. Hey, man, I really appreciate the conversation, brother. It was a, it was a pleasure. Ah, oh, incredible interview. Thank you so much. I, it's it's cool to talk to someone who actually knows what's going on. And, you know, the <laughs> albums, you've you've obviously did your research. So I appreciate you, bro. Hey, man, longtime fan. I will continue to be. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much.